Okay, I know I've been kind of critical of a lot of ASUS motherboards recently, so let's see if they finally turn things around with the ASUS Turf B850 Plus Wi-Fi, which will cost you just $195, making it one of the cheaper AM5 boards. So then what sacrifices were made to achieve that price? Oh, well, starting off with CPU power, here we have 14 plus 2 plus 1 power phases, rated at a maximum of 80 amps, and I know I sound like a broken record saying it in every single motherboard video, but it's literally more than enough for most people, especially when combined with two full 8 pins for CPU power, given how some B850 boards opt to go for 8 plus 4 config instead. Another thing of note is that the 8000 mega transfer per second maximum memory speed rating is a bit lower than other B850 mobile boards, but again it does not matter for 99.99% of people. So okay, let's move down to the PC expansion then instead, where, oh Asus, you know the way into my heart, finally a motherboard with 1x slots again. Again. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We do have a primary PC Gen 5 16 x slot, which yet again is not a requirement for B850. Then one additional 16 x slot that actually just has four Gen 4 lanes, and then two Gen 4 1x slots as well, which oh man, I missed seeing. However, storage wise, you do have just three M.2 slots, even though we've been seeing B850 mover boards with up to four. And as you can expect, the main one is a PC Gen 5, and the other two are both Gen 4. Though keep in mind that if you pop Populate that last M.2 slot, you will lose access to that one four lane PCIe slot. And on top of the storage, you have four SATA connectors. Other internal I.O. includes seven fan connectors, which should be enough for most cases. And while you do have three addressable RGB connectors, you have no non-addressable four pinner here for legacy support, which is just bizarre. But anyway, turn your thing around to look at the rear I.O. and ASUS, I'm actually impressed with you for once, because we're getting a whopping 9 USB Type A ports, only 2 of which are Gen 2, so gold star there. Though granted you are just getting a single USB Type C port, but thankfully it's running at 20 gigabit per second, unlike something like that MSO Tomahawk, which only had 10 gig USB C. Another thing I'm impressed by is the fact you get both HDMI and DisplayPort for integrated graphics, even though let's be honest, most people won't care about that. Add to that the predictable 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and the also predictable Wi Fi 7, and ooh, look at that, we finally do have a motherboard with 5 audio jacks again, though sadly no optical spdiff, which again, while annoying, I do understand that not many people would really miss that anyway, and it's all running off the AOC 1220p codec. With all of that combined, this motherboard ain't half bad I guess? And if you didn't know, that's a pretty big compliment on this channel. I mean come on, it's a sub $200 AMD motherboard that has pretty much everything you need and none of the things that you don't need, and while its aesthetic is pretty generic and uninteresting, it also makes it pretty universal matching most PC builds. So if you want to grab yourself, then our Amazon and Newegg links to it will be up in the iCards and down in the video description below, where you're also going to find our Patreon, because believe it or not, it is an even better deal than this board. Plus huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Hello Ronyak, Bella Shvoka, Patrick Harrison, not a pseudonym, Max Summoner, Shane Allcroft, and Level Up. But anyway, that's all it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.